Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. I hope that you're all having a really fantastic day thus far. It is the end of the week. And so, uh, of course, in this update video, I'll be taking you guys through what is happening now across the North Atlantic. There are four tropical waves uh, along with that system uh, that is affecting portions of the southeastern U.S. So we'll be talking about those as well as when could we see development uh, as we're going to be progressing into the coming weeks and so before i go into details please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update all right, and so let's go ahead and get on with it. Taking a look at the uh, infrared satellite of the North Atlantic, we can see here that things are really uh, messy across some areas. Lots of shower and thunderstorm activity for some areas. Again, we've got four tropical waves that activity that you see that is along uh, the intertropical convergence zone where uh, we have the waves propagating. And so uh, looking into the vicinity of the southeastern U.S., again, we've got that system, not a tropical cyclone, but it is likely bringing impacts in terms of shower and thunderstorm activity as well as uh, even some strong gusty winds along sections of Georgia and the Carolinas. And uh, we also noticed that other blob of activity out there uh, that has quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity in association with it and it is just to the west of Bermuda so it could bring some impacts to the island as we uh, progress through this morning. Uh, let's go to the northwestern side of South America here and uh, we're seeing that we've got these blobs of convective activity. One of those big ones is over Venezuela right now. Lots of shower and thunderstorms uh, also for sections of Brazil. But looking into the vicinity of Guyana, Suriname and French Guiana we're seeing that there isn't too much at the moment some cloud cover maybe with some showers for some areas but uh, not too much is happening and of course we've got the tropical wave in the region uh, inducing some of that activity and so uh, for some areas such as Trinidad, Tobago, Grenada, the Grenadines, possibly Barbados as well uh, as a result of the passage of the wave if it manages to uh, induce more activity then you guys can expect some rainfall as you're going to be progressing throughout today and then of course that wave is expected to I'll make its way, of course, into Venezuela and it's going to be passing by Bonaire, Curacao, and then Aruba. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes we see these tropical waves and they may come in and they are vacant of any activity. We don't even know that a tropical wave is making its way by. So uh, things are expected to be sunny for the most part for the ABC Islands uh, as we're going to be progressing into the coming days. And so looking at the general Caribbean region, though, we're seeing here that uh, we've got quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity taking place across some areas, some sections of Nicaragua, uh, as well as Honduras, even along the coast of Guatemala. There we see that flare up of that blob of activity that is slowly dissipating right now. We even see that little area of some deep convection and lots of showers and thunderstorms uh, making its way toward the east right now, not affecting anywhere at the moment. And we've got some thunderstorm activity being uh, prevalent across sections of the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, also going down to parts of eastern Cuba and uh, Haiti as well. But looking over in the east, it's pretty dry for the most part. There isn't anything uh, happening at the moment. And so guys, now we want to go ahead and talk about the potential for uh, seeing development. When could we see development, especially in terms of these waves just rapidly coming off Africa and making their way westward? So uh, first things first, I want to take you to the Saharan earlier map. So the Saharan dust is something that is pretty significant each hurricane season because uh, it creates a very dry, stable environment. And so uh, when this dust infiltrates tropical waves, it can prevent them from getting any uh, it can prevent them from inducing any activity in terms of showers and thunderstorms. And in that case, uh, activity is kept at bay in the Atlantic, just as what we saw last year. Most of July and also August were very, very quiet because there was just a surge in all of that Saharan dust that prevented development for some time. And so around this time of year, uh, right now it is in less of an abundance. So that is why we are able to see some activity along the intertropical 
convergence zone in association with those waves. But when we have a large plume of dust or dry air, it is unlikely that we'll see development. So if this trend continues, this is going to be something that favors tropical cyclogenesis or developments because uh, tropical cyclones, they depend on instability in the atmosphere uh, to develop. And so the next thing that we want to talk about is the sea surface temperature. So we're looking at the anomaly map here. And when we go more to that pale yellow, go into those shades of oranges and reds, that is temperatures above normal. White indicates that things are pretty much normal and blue indicates that uh, temperatures are below normal. So we're seeing here that across the tropical Atlantic, we're having that warming and overall for the North Atlantic, uh, we're seeing anomalous warmth in terms of the sea surface temperatures or the ocean surface temperatures. Uh, and the next thing is that going to the actual sea surface temperature map right now, tropical cyclones, they require at least 26 degrees Celsius in most cases to develop and especially coming from those tropical waves. So as they make their way closer to the Caribbean, they're going to be encountering more favorable conditions in terms of sea surface temperatures. But of course, that isn't the only factor needed to support development. The wind shear has to also be conducive because what happens is that those upper level winds, when they're so strong, they displace activity. And uh, we can see the effect on many, uh, we've seen the effect on many tropical cyclones, even Ian last year at the time when it, when it was in the Caribbean, very lopsided because of that wind shear. Next, I want to go to this uh, ocean heat content map. So, of course, where we see those yellows, oranges, and reds, we're seeing that in uh, the northwestern Caribbean and things are warming up off northeastern South America as well. We, When we've got deep, warm water, we just have all that energy there uh, attempting to fuel tropical cyclones during the hurricane season when we have these waves. So, all in all, conditions have to be conducive enough to allow for development. But typically, in the month of June, this is where we see development. So uh, even in terms of those tropical waves or disturbances, they may make their way to the Caribbean, but as they progress to the western part of the basin, when uh, things get more conducive, they sometimes uh, get themselves together and develop, uh, affecting areas such as Central America, even the northwestern Caribbean uh, in terms of uh, Cuba and going into the Gulf of Mexico, bringing impacts to Gulf Coast states or even the southeast eastern coast of the U.S. So this is a typical area to watch uh, and this is based on statistics of course in terms of where most development takes place each hurricane season in the month of June. So this is going to be an area to watch and not to say that we shouldn't pay attention to the tropical Atlantic because even though this is a typical origin spot there have been storms that make their way from tropical waves out in the tropical Atlantic and develop on approach to the Caribbean. So of course I'm going to be tracking all that is happening for you guys and uh, of course you can share this channel so that you help other persons to stay updated on all that is happening and that is pretty much it for this update video and so I hope that you found it to be quite informative however if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments uh, and you can also share your thoughts there and of course remember to always be weatherwise.